We've got the Traxxas Max in the house today. This thing is a 4S capable waterproof basher that will hit 40 miles an hour out of the box. And if you change the gearing, it'll do 60 miles an hour on that four cell LiPo. So let's check it out. And then we're gonna go outside and drive it. The Traxxas Max is a ready to run vehicle, so it comes pre-assembled out of the box and includes most of the items that are needed, like the transmitter and then some basic tools. You will also need though either a three or four cell LiPo battery with the Traxxas ID connector and then a battery charger as well as four AA batteries for the transmitter. There are three total different body color schemes to choose from with the other two being like a black and red and then a black and blue. But this particular paint looks pretty good and on the top of the roof, we have a hard plastic uh, rocker here that helps with the self riding. And then when you're skidding on the lid, it'll help protect the lac sand. If you move to the back, we also have some some uh, roll bar cages that are extended underneath the body to add even more rigidity so it's really solid if you're landing on the roof. And then here on the tailgate is one more hard plastic piece that will help protect the body from getting scraped up and rubbed. With this being a 10 scale size monster truck, it's pretty comparable to other 4S monster trucks in that category. And I've got some comparisons to show you here in a little bit. But for our overall length, this thing's about 21 and a half inches and our width is about 14 and a half inches. Our actual wheelbase though is about 13 inches. And then for our weight, we're just under 10 pounds. Here's a size comparison against the 4S Arma Creighton on the left and the Proline Pro MT 4x4 on the right, which is also 4S capable. Here's the Max against the UDR on the far left, then the E-Revo 2.0 and the Slash 4x4 all the way on the right. And lastly, here's the Max compared to the TRX4 Sport. Now the wheel system on this truck is really cool. You can put a lot of different tires and wheels on here. So this truck has a five millimeter axle, so that uses an eight mil uh, wheel nut wrench, just like the UDR. So the wheel nut wrench needs to be an eight mil and there is a basic wrench included with the truck. But when we take that off, the wheel slides right off and with it is this little insert. So this insert basically takes up the space in that larger axle hole size, which is more common on an eight scale size rig like the E-Revo 2.0 and basically shrinks down that size to this little five millimeter axle hole. So essentially you could take any eight scale size wheel that uses a 17 millimeter hex, you throw one of these adapters on it and that tire and wheel will be compatible on the Traxxas Max. Now, if we look at the five mil axle, right here is our spline Traxxas 17 millimeter hex, and it is in plastic. So look out for those in aluminum as well. So what are some other tire combos look like on this truck? Well, like I said, the UDR tires and wheels will bolt right onto this thing because of that smaller axle size. And well, let me show you. These are the UDR wheels. These are the Proline Hyrax tires. This tire set we actually just used in our top five best UDR upgrades. And these tires and wheels look really good on this truck. These are the Sweep Road Crusher belted on-road tires. In the front at the extreme steering angles, it hits the body just a little bit, but with a little bit of trimming, you could easily solve that. Here's the tires off the E-Revo 2.0. And again, a little bit of rubbing up here in these extreme steering angles, but nothing that can't be fixed with a little bit of Lexan trimming. And these are the Proline Trencher HP 3.8 inch belted tires. And they're huge. Now, of course, anytime you add a bigger size tire to your rig, to your truck, you're gonna to wanna to adjust your gearing most likely so you don't overheat and overstress your electronics. Let's check out our tire lineup. So what do we look at? Sweep, Road Crusher. Here are the stock tires. Here is the Traxxas UDR tire. Here is the Proline Trencher HP 2.8 belted tires. You could equip these on the Max as well. We didn't put them on because as you can see, they're actually a little bit smaller than the stock tires, but being belted, they may be pretty good for speed runs. And that's what we put on there. I think my favorite tire wheel combo on the Max so far was the UDR tire. 
You know what this means? You can put any other tire with the 17 mil hex on the UDR now if you use these inserts. Let's see. Totally getting sidetracked right now, but this is awesome. Oh no. The axle isn't sticking out enough to get a nut on. <laughs> no. Let's try the backs. Oh, come on. Oh, it's hitting the trailing arm. Dang it. How about the stock max tires? Are they too, too wide? This actually work okay, I think. Dang. There's just not enough. There's, there, there's not enough threads coming through that little insert. All right, I digress. Next, so when we pop the body off, you can see there's a lot of reinforcement inside the body to help with the durability and just the, the rigidness of the body when you're landing on your lid and tumbling around. And then it also aids in the no body clip design where you can just use the latch to lock on the body. And the sides of the Lexan bodies kind of lock into these little plastic channels here. So it's nice and secure. The body isn't flapping around a whole lot. Once the body's attached to the chassis, it's really on there. It's pretty dang secure. Now underneath, this thing looks like a mini X-Max. It really does. The shock towers, the chassis, the way this whole tub is assembled and put together, it shuts the shrunken down X-Max. So for our servo right here, it's got like 285 ounce inches of torque and it's the same form factor as and the servo is the same form factor as the X-Max servo. So some of you may be familiar with this servo adapter, which allows you to remove that odd size servo, take it out and replace it with a standard size servo if you wish. So you just have to buy this option part that is the adapter and then put in the servo of your choosing. And I should say as a disclaimer, I haven't actually installed this and I don't know for 100% that it'll work, but I'm pretty dang sure it will. For the remainder of our electronics, this guy right here is our light controller that the front and rear lights are attached to. Now we have a 540 can size motor. It's a long can. I think it's a 2400 kV with this big old aluminum heat sink on the top and then a cooling fan. The ESC is the VXL 4S, so it's four cell compatible, of course. And then up here is our waterproof receiver box with a TSM enabled receiver. Then if we move on the suspension arm, are symmetrical left, right, front, and rear, which keeps it really nice and convenient to have spares handy. The rear and front drive shafts are plastic spline drive shafts. They look pretty big and beefy, so they should hold up to the 4S abuse. Then if we look at these shocks, they're really big shocks. They're a lot bigger than would come on a standard 10 scale size Traxxas model. They're not as big as the X-Max shocks, but they're pretty nice. They're an aluminum body with a plastic top cap and lower cap big old burly spring, and then the spring perch at the bottom is actually screwed on and fixed. But as far as suspension action, the smoothness, the shocks are really, really smooth. They're really smooth, really supple. As you've seen, I've dropped it quite a few times and it just absorbs the drop and that impact really well. They're really nice shocks. <laughs>
And we're back. So as you guys saw, we did 49 miles an hour. That was our top speed with the stock gearing on a four cell with the stock tires. We could have gone faster had we had a longer stretch, but that was plenty fast for us. And that was with TSM at about 50%, and that's pretty much where we left it the whole time. I tried it a little bit without TSM, and the truck is a little squirrely, even on the pavement. Uh, it's kind of a handful to drive. So that TSM definitely helps out. The truck has no shortage of power, that's for sure, with the four cell LiPo. It pops wheelies on command, even at pretty fast speeds. You can still get a wheelie out of it. Now the wheelie bar has got some flex to it. It's kind of like the Rustler 4x4 wheelie bar. Um, and the truck tends to have the left rear tire pop up off the ground and it kind of diffs out when it's doing a wheelie. Um, you can you can get it to hold a wheelie pretty good, uh, but we crashed most often when doing a wheelie from that, that left rear tire popping up. Now the plastic guards on the body, the rocker, and this tailgate protector are really nice to have on the Lexan body. You can see they're pretty scratched up, uh, but the Lexan underneath is definitely A-OK. -okay. The self-riding on this truck is definitely a lifesaver when it's far away from you, uh, so you don't have to go and flip it over yourself. Now you do need a really hard surface to get the truck to rock and pivot in that soft dirt field. Uh, the truck has no pivoting going on. It's just kind of smushed in the soft soil, kind of sunken down into it. The truck definitely needs to be on top of the surface rather than sinking in it. There was even one situation on the hard pavement where the self-riding didn't work. It like rolled the truck over, but then it kind of teetered on a wheel and fell back on its lid, kind of funny. So the self-riding isn't 100%, but it does work most of the time. When this truck is released, or if you're watching this in the future, it probably already is, but it'll come at a street price of $529. Plus, you'll still need to add a battery charger and some AA batteries, and that's a lot less expensive than the proper X-Max, which is $899. But nevertheless, that is kind of pricey when you compare it to some other 4S capable rigs out there. But if you're really looking for that X-Max look, power and punch, and that little bit higher sitting monster truck look, the Max is definitely a good contender. And as you guys saw, we flipped and tumbled and crashed this truck a lot, and we never broke a single thing. The worst thing I can say about the truck is that in the rear end, it has a little bit of a squeak now when it comes back up, but we drove in some really dusty conditions and that tends to happen to RCs when driving in those conditions. So all in all, super cool truck. It really is. It's got a lot of power, a lot of punch. It throws big dirt clods and it pops wheelies with ease. We had a lot of fun with it out there and I imagine we'll be making some more videos with it.
If you guys have any questions or comments for us, be sure to leave that down below and check out our links down there as well for more information. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for our future videos. I'm Brett with A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.